Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everyone. Whenever you're watching this, this is Larry Lewis again on the Mentors Lounge. And this is the last episode in October, right? October on the Mentors Lounge is dedicated for women, ladies, the girl child. We want to, we've, we've brought quite a number of uh, great women who are able to do a lot in their sphere of influence. And on, on this occasion, I'm bringing to us a very dear sister of mine. The journey dates back to close to uh, how many years now? Close to 20 years. I yeah. think it's over 20 years, yes. Uh, this person is someone that um, we were in Obafemi Awolo University together. We were in the same fellowship. And now she's in the UK. She's a registered nurse in the UK and a nurse educator. Make welcome. Omolola Omoto Show. You're Thank welcome, you. Omolola. <laughs> Thank you very much, Larry. I appreciate the platform. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, yeah. So my name is Omolola, but everybody just calls me Lola. So I am Lola Omoto Show, and I am a nurse and a nurse educator at the moment. Okay, um, a brief, um, a brief, I'll make it brief, history of myself. So I left Nigeria in 2006. I came to join my husband with my, um, I came with my girls uh, to join my husband in 20, 2006. At that time, I was lecturing in philosophy at the Obafemi Awolo University. And I've been doing that for about six years. And so I left. Um, and when we got here, it was a decision on what to do next. At that point in time, I wasn't interested in lecturing anymore. So I kind of had to decide what I wanted to do. So, but there was a detour in our journey in the UK. Uh, we went to Grenada and we stayed in Grenada in the Caribbean islands for two years. And after that, we came back in 2008 to UK. And at that point, uh, I decided I wanted to do nothing. Uh, actually, my husband suggested it. Of course, I didn't want to. And but eventually, after a journey to Grenada, I decided I wanted to do nursing. So I applied, and I got admitted to the Birmingham City University in 2010. And it was a three-year program. I finished with distinction in my class and became a registered nurse. Um, then my first journey was I. I had a job. My first job was at the Birmingham Children's Hospital. I knew I wanted theater. After doing a, a placement in theaters, uh, I, I loved it. And I wanted to do theater nursing. So I went straight into theaters. I became a scrub nurse at the Birmingham Children's Hospital uh, from 2013 to 2017. And uh, when I left in 2017, I came to the Royal Wolverhampton Trust, the New Cross, in theaters as well. And I was there for about a year, you know, almost two years. So in 2019, I joined the nurse education team and I've been there since then. I, um, yeah, I think that's about it for now. Should we wow. just stop? So at the wow. moment, I work, I work as a practice education facilitator in the nurse education team. And I am the uh, healthcare support workers lead for the trust. So that's what I do. Wow, 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 yeah. that is awesome. Wow. From philosophy to nursing. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> um, this, is, this is a beauty of um, the developed world, that they don't limit what you can achieve. I mean, yes. who would believe that someone with a philosophy background, that means that's arts? Yeah, arts. And pivot into nursing? Yep. You did not only uh, qualify as a nurse, you qualified with a distinction. That yes. is first <laughs> class. Wow. Man, that is some story there. Some really, really interesting career trajectory. Now, the truth is, from my study of what is happening in the UK at the moment, um, there, is, there seems to be a high demand or need for nurses yes kind of at the moment and 
what can you say because when you when you check what is happening now they there is even a legislation that says that um for foreigners who are coming into the uk right they will waive some things for medical uh professionals like nurses um they will not pay health surcharge that is paid by uh, internationals so if you are to advise someone i mean someone watching this will say that if this person who has philosophy can become a nurse <laughs> anything is then possible i have hope i have hope yes 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 anything is possible yeah what would you say i mean the other time i think we were discussing and you were telling me that there are two there are two things that anybody that wants to uh, practice nursing in the uk and uh, needs to uh, factor in uh, is either the person has become a qualified nurse or is just in the process please can you just uh, oh, okay. break this thing down for for anyone watching this so there is a national shortage of nurses and uh, the government has promised to um give us 50,000 nurses before i think it's 2023 or 2020 2023 or thereabouts uh, i'm not sure on that fact but we have 50,000 promised and one of the ways that has been set out to fill the vacancy is to do international recruitment and trust around the uk are recruiting nurses uh, although they're not actively recruiting so they're not campaigning to you to come and uh work for them mm. especially in nigeria so what they ask they're putting adverts out and so if you apply they will interview you and offer you a place uh, so active uh, recruiting is not uh, actually permitted in nigeria mm. so you shouldn't be offering i mean you shouldn't be giving anyone anyone money uh, to do the process, which I think is important that I mentioned that. Yeah. The process is, it has okay. to be you that wants, sorry about that. Yeah. It has to be you that is interested in relocating. And once right. you decide that you want to relocate, the hope is you have to um, make sure you've done your English testing. English testing? Yes. Okay. So you have to do the IELTS mm -hmm. or IELTS. Uh, you do your IELTS or you do the OET. Either of the two is acceptable. And is there a particular uh, mark minimum? Yes. So I think you have to have seven in every of the... So in listening, uh, speaking, and uh, in reading, I think you're allowed 6.5. Okay. But, and you're allowed to use two, uh, two of your results. So if you did the first one, you didn't make everything at once. You do. You can do it again and combine two results. You're allowed to. There are terms and conditions for that. But um, mm. so the IELTS, and then once you've done the IELTS, you have to do the um, CBT exam. Now okay. all of this needs to be done before you come. Right. Before you apply. So do the CBT, which is a computer-based testing, which would ask about your nursing knowledge and understanding and skills. So it's a testing, it's been recently um, changed. So the testing is a bit different from what it used to be, excuse me. <clears throat> it's a bit different from what it used to be. So um, you need to pass that. Once you pass that and you've had your um, IELTS exam uh, test passed as well, then you start to look for vacancies. Huh. A lot of trust. So if you go on the NHS jobs website, a lot of trust would ad advertise their um, their vacancies there. Vacancies, yeah. They tell you if they will support your application as well. Right. So th those are the two things you need to do before you start looking for any job in the UK. Right. Awesome. <clears throat> and this information is also available on the NMC website. So if you go on the NMC website, that's the Nursing Midwifery Council of the UK. Huh. If you go on the NMC website, you would find the information. I think when you put this video up, you can leave a link at the bottom yes. of the video. Yes, I will when do that. Take the link and it will tell them, it will tell you what you need to do. Awesome. The information they need for you to provide for them. Um, huh. 
and how much it's going to cost you. So there is a readiness check you can do mm. on the NMC website to see whether you're ready to come through come before through. you even start looking for applications. Right. That's very good. That's that's really because um, recently I've I've been ha- I mean just like uh, people asking me about this uh, post study. I did a free webinar the other day. Um, so follow up to that webinar. People have been asking me um, what is a prospect for somebody who wants to do nursing. Um, what do I need to do? And I said, okay, you know what? I have someone who is my very close sister. She is going to be on the interview and um, you can watch the answers there. Now, is there any other um, requirement that anybody must fill? Uh, for example, you know, in a place like Nigeria, you have a uh, school of nursing, you have universities uh, offering nursing as a degree. Is there any restriction in any of these uh, different routes of becoming a nurse? Um, and so, so that people can know what, apart from ILTS or the CBT. Okay, so for you to go through the IELTS, CBT, and then OSCE route, you have to be a qualified nurse from Nigeria. Registered. Registered. Registered nurse from Nigeria. You're registered with the NMC in Nigeria before you can come through that route. Okay. Now, there's also an option for you to uh, come and study nursing here. It's a bit more expensive route, but mm-hmm. because you have to pay the international fees, but the universities that would offer uh, you to come and do your nursing here. Nursing takes three years and you have to do it in the university. Now, we don't have the nursing schools as Nigerians do. So our nursing course are degree courses, and you do that by a university. So you have to go through the process as an undergraduate, make that application. And there's some universities that would actually offer international students to come and study nursing. Okay, okay. That's great. That's great. So once somebody is a qualified nurse in Nigeria, yeah. Person should do ILTS, CBT, um, do the OSCE. CBT. What's OSCE? OSCE is um is the objective structured clinical examination. Why did I forget that? So objective yes. structured clinical examination, OSCE. Okay. okay. Now this is a practical examination you have to do. Okay. Okay. So you have to do. They have to watch you do an assessment on a patient. So you have to go through several stations and show that you are actually able to. So most trusts will prepare you to do the course. Oh. And they often pay for it as well. Once you get offered, so you apply for a job. Uh Once you are offered the job, you have to do your OSCE before you can register with the NMC as a registered nurse in the UK. In the UK, all right. So, but you don't, you can't do the OSCE outside of the UK. Okay, all right. So you have to come come into the UK to get the OSCE. And if there are any chance someone watching this is already a nurse that is already in UK, Uh you can actually go through that route. If you've passed your English testing, uh, you've already been living in the UK, you can do your English testing, approach a trust to see if they would sponsor you to do your OSCE and then work there with them as a registered nurse. So that's an option, but you need that to be able to register as a qualified, as a registered nurse in the UK. How long does this, um, the OSCE uh, program take? Uh, the OSCE is, is a day exam. It's just oh. a day exam. So okay. preparation can take between five to 10 days to four weeks. All right, all right. So preparation for the exam will take between five to 10 days and four, uh, four weeks. That bit is really, really um, very educative and informative for everyone. Uh, who wants to follow this route? And there are so many, so many. I mean, I, and this is why this interview is very, very um, important that I push it out almost immediately. Now, I want to ask, you know, you went from being graduate of philosophy in, in OAU, lecturing in OAU, now a practice nurse, yeah. and you are now a nurse educator. Yeah. So kind of you you back to your teaching line. Yeah. But now teaching nurses. 
All right. Cheers. <laughs> now, my question is, how was because what we're trying to do here is, how did you overcome the shift to submit yourself to nothing, and you did not just graduate; you finished with a distinction. Distinction is first class. Yeah. What prepared you for this? Is it your husband? Is um, it an inner will? I mean, <laughs> I'm interested okay. in this this bit because it's interesting. <laughs> Usually, you, one will say that, oh, philosophy ah, doesn't have the background, doesn't have the yes. capacity, yes. you know. Yes. Well, now you go there and blast the thing. Yeah. You crossed yes. it. Okay. <laughs> Share um, this experience with us. <laughs> okay, thank you. So I think when we came in 2006 and my husband suggested I did nursing, I was like, no. Nursing, me, never. And uh, I, I could not picture during been a nurse I couldn't mm. and then we went to the Caribbeans and I saw a course uh, advertised it was um, care of the of people with developmental disabilities one I was bored and two I was intrigued by that okay people who have developmental disabilities okay let's see what that is about and then I registered to do the course it was only a four months course and at that point in time, I did a bit of anatomy and physiology, and I did health psychology, and I was hooked. And I was hooked. So when we left, immediately we came back in 2008, I knew the first thing I wanted to do was to do nursing. So um, I thought about it, I was like, I was going to do, of course, my husband wanted me to do it anyway, so it was very super supportive. And it was like, yeah, just, just apply. And... Um, you get things like, oh, don't put your actual qualification. Don't say you have a degree in philosophy. It might not tease <laughs> you. Well, of course, I just come from Nigeria then. I, and I was like, no, I'm not hiding my certificate. It's too bad. Yeah. So I, I put my BA, BA on in philosophy, put it yeah. there. I, I couldn't um, defend my master's in philosophy, so I didn't get my certification. So I, I, did, I left that out. And hmm. I put my... Uh, care of the de developmental disability course I did as well. Mm -hmm. I put that on and I applied. And immediately, initially, I applied to University of Overhampton only because it was close to me. Yeah. But I, I didn't get that one. Hmm. And so I was like, it's okay. Maybe you should try next year. And another person said, how about you try Birmingham City University? I went there. It's hmm. really good for me. And I was like, okay. And then I tried the University of Birmingham and immediately i got my application um accepted hmm. so no, i got accepted at birmingham city university and then it was the task of how do i do nursing i'd never the last time i did sciences was in 1992 when i graduated from secondary school yeah, that was biology. the last time i did biology yes yeah. i'm not excited i'm an art student yeah when i got there i prayed and I asked hmm. God for wisdom. Hmm. And I told I told God something. I said, if I could do this, as in, I can do anything, really. Hmm. And one day I was in class and God said something to me. And he said, your hands have started it. Your hands will finish, finish it. it. That was in class. And I was seeing anatomy and physiology and it was in depth. It was, it was hard. Mm. But I was so intrigued. So I think my passion for what I was learning mm. kind of kept me going through it all. It was hard. Actually, my husband was like, I didn't realize. I, every time I would come home, I'm like, you won't believe what we learned today. We did this, we did that. And I started to move all sort of stuff. And you would be like, okay. I didn't teach you that. I said, yes, that's it. She does that. And, um, it was just, it was, it was uh, an incredible journey. It was a mm. tough, tough, tough three years, tough mm. three years. I think it was one of the hardest thing I had to undertake because I had childcare, mm. my kids were there. I had a young kid. My child was literally less than, just about to turn one when I went mm. to start the course. So it was wow. really, really hard. And I had to commute to uh, Birmingham, which is about half an hour away from where I live. Mm. So it was, it was challenging. But I think it was something I'd made up my mind I was going to do. 
Mm. I had my support network. I had friends, family, everyone was supporting me. I had people who asked if I was crazy for making that shift, but I was like, I'm doing it. Yeah. I think it was, it was the resolution to do it and the joy I found in learning something different and new. Mm. And then impact you have when you go on placement, the impact you have on patient care. The mm. impact you have on people, you you talk to someone, you see them light up and then they distract the next day, you take care of someone. And those little things I experienced as a nurse, as a mm. nurse student, was absolutely mind blowing. It was nothing yeah. I'd ever done before. And I thought, oh my God, this look like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. And it was just the, the change to be able to impact people in a different way was mm. was amazing awesome. i think that's what brought me from point a to where i wow. am right now. awesome awesome i mean the the key one for me there is the word of god that came to you oh yes, I mean, oh, yes. yes. your hand started it your hands your hand will finish it yes that alone when that echoes in you even when you're faced with a, with a big daunting, uh, maybe a module or anything like that, it will always give you fresh strength, fresh energy. I mean, thanks for sharing that that with us. Um, I mean, for women, right? You are mm-hmm. doing mother care. You are doing course. Yep. You have family commitments. Yep. So many other things. And yet, you came out with a distinction. That is phenomenal. And today, as of um, as 2019 now, you pivoted into nurse it's education. Good. What informed the shift? Okay. Why did um, you make that shift? Why, why did you not continue in the, um, you know, you said you, you, were, you went, went to theater nursing. Yes. So, why did you I, make that I, change? I love, I love theaters. I love scrubbing. I love the operations we do. I love the opening of the abdomen and we fix things. And it, I, I just love the adrenaline of being in theater. And I thought I was going to be there. But apart from just uh, loving my clinical role, one of the other things I loved doing was looking after students when they come. I love looking after new, newly qualified nurses or any new person that comes to my theater anyway. I love taking care of them. I love showing them around. I like that they uh, get to learn of me. And I just took it as my responsibility to make sure thing, uh, those students and new starters were taken care of. So I became the uh, one of the education links for my theater. Uh, both while I was um, at the Children's Hospital and when I came into New Cross, I became one of the education link. And I, I think education has always been in my blood. Um, <laughs> it's, it's always been in my blood. So I love, I love, love teaching. And I love the fact that you could shift somebody's uh, perspective just by giving them the tools they need to. And um, so when I, I saw the opportunity to do a practice education facilitator, a friend of mine was like, Lola, that would be really good for you. You should go. And I'm like, I'm not applying. I just can't go through this drama again. And she's like, just try it. Go, go. And I applied and I got invited for the interview. I didn't actually know what to expect mm. because I was leaving a clinical role for a corporate role. Mm. And I, I, I wasn't too sure I wanted to leave theatres yes. because it was it was a passion for me. But mm. as, at the same time, education is a passion for me. Mm. And uh, so I had to, well, I applied saying, well, let's see what happens. And immediately I got invited for interview. I did my interview, I smashed it and I got the job and oh, I got the job. So <laughs> I, um, and it's been, it's been a, a massive learning curve because it's different from everything i'm used to it's um teaching in nigeria is way way different 
from mm. what we do here. Nigeria, mm. the lecturer is king, but here you serve. Mm. Mm. You serve the people. You're patient, you're accommodating, you're, you're passionate and you are compassionate mm. about your teaching as well, making sure people get it yeah. and they can see why they need to apply the evidence-based practice, practice to, yeah. to the clinical role. And I think mm. you get to see you impact um, patient safety and patient care in a different way, in a different role. While okay. while I was in theatre, I, I, I am a patient advocate, I could take care of my patient. But then we moved to uh, this side. When I moved to this role, it was in a different, um, it was in a different, uh, dimension entirely yeah yeah but it's uh it's been fulfilling i've been here since 2019 i'm learning loads hmm. and there's still plenty more but there are huge opportunities at work and i get to do something i really love to do awesome 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 i mean this is like you pivot from philosophy to nursing from yes. nursing to theater nursing yeah. Here, tell us into education facilitator. <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. Wow, yeah. wow! You are now an embodiment of knowledge. Oh, I mean, they, okay. they can call you an embodiment of knowledge in this I... space now. Yeah, because before you can have a distinction in nursing, that means you understand what's happening there. And before you can, I mean, upgrade to a point where you are now educating others you have knowledge so i i can rightly say that lola is an embodiment of knowledge <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't say that i think the more you know the more you realize the more you, know you don't know, you don't know. yes <laughs> and i think no one can say i'm an embodiment of knowledge because no one is because yeah. when you think you now know then you realize how much you actually don't know so we're That's, all learning yeah. we're learning that's your statement is one of the things that um, I was told when we were about finishing PhD. Um, in South Africa, I had my PhD in information system and, and one of the resource person that came one day said that, you know what, by the time you get a PhD, you will discover that your knowledge, um, uh, your search for knowledge has just commenced. Yes. 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 <laughs> so, yes, they say that you now have a PhD, you're an authority in a particular area, streamlined to a particular space. Yes. So, you start the learning process again. So, I agree mm -hmm. with you on that, that we keep learning and we keep, keep learning. learning till the very last day. Yeah. yeah. So, now we want to zoom into um, younger ones. Okay. Teenagers, young adults. What advice do you have for them based on your career trajectory? How can they um, discover? Because from what you share with us today, I see that the temporary detour in the where you are living from UK to the Caribbeans was actually the opportunity that God used in his own crafting to open you up to something yeah. which you did not know. Mm -hmm. So it's like the thing came to you and it was what you needed to transition to the next phase. Yeah. But before moving, to that Caribbean, possibly you wouldn't have thought about it or that that, that kind of uh, opportunity would not have presented itself to you. So I see a situation where sometimes our life, and this is, this is very, very important, especially for the younger ones, things come up that looks as if it's a shift or it's a disruption, but in yeah. actual fact, it's actually the pathway to enter the next level yeah. and if you don't maximize it well you miss it 
So what what can you say, share from your own experience because it has been from one point to the other and you are you're, um, advancing and f- getting fulfilled in what you really like to do? Thank you, uh, thank you, Larry. I would say be open, be open, mm. be fearless. Mm. And someone, someone said to me, every opportunity you get, take it. Mm. Every opportunity you get, take it. Mm. Now that might sound weird, but it means that, okay, I'll, I'll go back to my myself and my story. Yeah. When I was young, all I wanted to be was a lawyer. Mm. And I applied, I applied to OAU Law, but I didn't meet the cutoff. So the following year, I decided I wasn't going to Wait. Uh, apply to the law anymore. I was going to apply to philosophy because what they told me the previous year, I didn't know what philosophy was. But what they told me the previous year was, oh, only if I had so-so amount, if I had 200, I could have gone into philosophy. And then second year, changed to law. Law. So I was like, oh, okay. Then I decided I was going to choose, my first choice was going to be uh, philosophy. That was how I ended up in philosophy. And I'll just say, in our journey in life, it's amazing what the path is like. You never know what the path is like. You might start from here Mm. and end up in an entirely different place. Mm. You might start off from, this is what I want to do, and end up in a place you never imagined. Mm. Now, take us to this scripture that says, what eyes have not seen, mm. what ears have not heard, mm. nor heart conceived. That's what God has planned for those who love him. Mm. And when we faithfully continue to do what we ought to do, mm. be diligent, be faithful, and you will find yourself where you should be. You should be. It is about finding joy in whatever state you are, everywhere you are at. Find mm. your joy, find your peace, find your happy. Be mm. open for whatever opportunities come your way. Mm. Don't think, oh, this looks, this looks tedious. That might be the opportunity you're looking for. Initially, when my husband suggested doing nursing, I was like, what? Me? Me? Mr. Motinja cannot be doing nursing. Mm. And um, now I cannot imagine a life without nursing. I can't imagine a life without it. And I would never, I I never imagined I would be where I am today. It it, it did not even cross my mind. But it it is to stay diligent, Mm. to be open Mm. whatever God throws at at your path Mm. whatever God throws in your path take it, embrace it Mm. and see where it leads you Mm. if there is a door, open it see where it takes you you Mm. might actually like it you might Mm. like it Mm. Mm. so take the path, don't be afraid I said be fearless Mm. I walked into my lecture theater the first time when I was doing nursing, I walked into my lecture theater. I, w- I was what you classify a mature student. Yeah. So I walked into my lecture theater with 18, uh, 19, 18 year olds. And I I looked around and I was like, what have I got myself into? <laughs> what the excitement of starting something new. Mm. I told myself, somebody looked at my application and they said they wanted her. I gave you a chance. Yes, and I said, I am rising to that. I am going to rise and make sure I am good at what I do. I don't like mediocre. Yes. I don't like mediocrity. I don't. Whatever I do, I do with excellence. Yeah, yeah. I do with excellence. So I walk diligently. And of course, it's, it's, it's not by just hard work because a lot of people working hard. Uh-huh. But we, we, are, we are graced to to take our journey uh. wherever it takes us. Uh. And I think if we consistently, consistently keep working hard, consistently take opportunities, uh. co- don't make excuses for mediocrity. Don't. Yeah. 
be brave be brave i know there are things there were a lot of a lot of my sets dropped out of uni some dropped out in our first year some dropped a lot more dropped out in our second year some dropped out in the third year wow but it's about being consistent what do you want to do i i, I wasn't sure i wanted to be a nurse but at that point in time it was what i needed to do and i did it so for every young person listening be open be fearless take whatever opportunities that come to you take it yeah. see where it leads you if you don't like it then you can always do try something else but you forever know i try that but yeah. it was not for me mm-hmm. i tried it it was not for me yeah. so but it's it's always you always have options be good at it or choose something else and um I attended a course and uh, the lady said do what enlivens you. Mm. Do what enlivens you. It brings what the life out. What gives you excitement? What gives you that joy? What what brings you to life? Do it. Mm. And if it deadens you, walk away. Okay. Also. 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 <laughs> This is powerful, powerful knowledge, powerful life, life um, thoughts, life knowledge, life principles that you've shared there, Lola. Um, I'm so, so happy with what I'm hearing today because even older people, people who are not young, those who are old, can actually pick some things from here that it doesn't matter. I mean, you are an adult student i mean someone who has graduated in nigeria who has been lecturing for 6 years you now started a program in 2008 right 2010 20, 2010 so that yes. is that is some years so for yes. you to now come into the class it takes courage i mean yeah. I, I like this um this message by uh bishop tb jakes He said that it takes courage to succeed. It takes courage to overcome challenges. It takes courage for you to be in a class mm. that you are the youngest person there or the oldest person. Yes. yes. The oldest person in that class will be like 10 years from you. Yeah. It takes courage to be in that yeah. class and not feel inf- like you're inferior to these people that are. I have passed my time and it is in that class that you now got a distinction it takes courage to go through that because I'm sure that there will have been moments that you ask yourself who led me to this why am I here and I'm sure that is why that message came to you that your hand started this and yeah, to finish it and th- that makes me on that makes me to bring this word that says that um, When God sends his word to you, it will heal you. Mm-hmm. If there is a mystery, it demystifies the mystery. If there is um, a, a darkness, it brings light there. And so when the word comes, it just makes you free and you have strength to run. That is really, really profound. Uh, just one or two more questions for you this evening and that will be all on the mentors lounge today now okay. you have cr- built a career in nursing for that person that is just coming into the system and you are to advise that person on how to navigate the path in nursing in the UK what are the things that you tell these people that go this way avoid this path follow this route you have seen it and you're still seeing it but for someone who's just coming in what advice do you have for them very important I, i think that is very important that Thank we hear that from you um I, actually it's something i'm actually very passionate about mm. and i I love people to do well. I encourage people to do well. 
And I think for any nurse that has just come into the country and they're trying to navigate the way around, mm. my first advice is stop. 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 Yes, stop and learn. Okay. Unlearn everything you know. Now, I'm not saying about your clinical judgment on clinical knowledge. Mm. Unlearn everything you know. Stop and learn. You have to come through a process of relearning. You have to learn how to learn in this environment. I will, I, I will put it into perspective. Mm. If you are a, a newly registered nurse in the UK and you are on your ward and you've only just started and things were quite difficult and a manager or anybody for that matter, comes and asks you, are you okay? <laughs> this is what I call the philosophy of okay. <laughs> are you okay? That question is so embedded in meaning. Wow. If you dare say, yes, I'm okay. Why are you asking if I'm okay? <laughs> You've answered yes to so many other things. Wow. So when I'm asking you, Larry, are you okay? I'm telling you, do you need my help? Is there any way I can support you? Is there anything I can do for you that might actually make your transition easier? Easier. Now, if you walk away and tell me, yes, I'm okay. Okay. So when situation arise, the manager of the senior person is going to turn around and say, but I asked you. And you said you were okay. Yeah, okay. And I'll go, well, you didn't ask me if I was having trouble settling down. Oh, yeah, that's the meaning of, are you okay? You're okay. <laughs> so, first of all, is you need to learn the way of the English. Mm. The way is different from the Nigerian way or the international way. Mm -hmm. So, understand the English. They're kind hearted people they're nice but you need to understand their ways you need to understand their idioms you mm. need to understand their mannerisms mm. you need to understand when they say can i make you a cup of tea you need to know what that means mm. so you need to stop i'll go back to that you need to stop <laughs> and learn mm. take a step back and observe be very quick to learn, be very quick to observe, be mm. very quick to pick up things. And then secondly, be exceptional at your job. Mm. Be excellent, no cutting corners. Mm. Work according to policies and procedures. Even if you feel you are the only one doing it, do it. Do it. Be the person, when everybody see your name on the list, they know what kind of shift they're going to have because they know you're going to make them work by the book. They know mm. you're going to care for your patients. They know mm. you're concerned about your colleagues. Mm. So be that person that works excellently. Mm. Be diligent at your work. Even mm. if everybody is lazing around and it looks like you're doing um, all the work. Of course, by all, by all means, don't, don't sit down and accept um, any kind of incivility towards you. Yeah. Don't accept um, discrimination. By all means, escalate that. Mm. But when you stop and observe how things are done, I say your first few weeks, learn quickly how they do things. And don't be quiet. If you, you don't understand something, then say. Mm. When my husband first came, it was the first time he was seeing oxygen and suction by every bed. That's not something we're used to in Nigeria. Mm. If you don't understand how things are done, ask questions. Mm. Ask questions. And if so one person shuts you down, find somebody else who will give you the answer. Mm. Mm. I mean, be an avid learner. Learn mm. quickly. Mm. How did they manage this here? How did they respond? How do I respond to this? And it's very vital that we learn how to do that mm. and how to stand up for ourselves. And be, for you to be able to stand up for yourself, it will take you being able to observe quickly, learn very quickly, and be excellent at your job. 
and then you can stand up for yourself and lastly i would say again take whatever opportunities come oh. any opportunities that present itself to you take it you can rise the bands as quickly as you want wherever you want to go the nhs is your oyster Mm. Anywhere you want to go, whatever you want to become, you will be your only stopping point. If you feel you're okay and satisfied with where you are, that's fine. You don't have to go further. But if you want more, the opportunities are right. And if you get stopped, don't be stopped. It just mm. means you might need to go through another channel. You might need to go in a different direction. But see what enlivens you. See what you like. And if you try, you don't like it. You can always come back. You have a, you have a registration as a nurse. You can do yeah. whatever. Yeah. Try to shiver ability if you don't like it. Try bereavement if you don't like it. Mm. There are different specialties you can try. Mm. Don't feel stuck. Don't feel used. Speak up for yourself. Take opportunities mm. Mm. and be brave. Be. You've already. I think. I applaud our international nurses because. They've already taken the biggest, biggest step, and that was deciding to come here. It to takes come. bravery. Yeah. It takes a whole dish of courage. I know nurses who would not bother to even take the first step. Yeah. Because they, they, they can't or they won't. But you did that. You mm. came. Mm. So make this your make this your place. Mm. Mm. Take mm. territories. Take territories. Enlarge the place of your tent. Own, own, own this thing. Own it. Awesome. 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 Deep one, Lala. Deep one. Okay, thank you. Deep one. I mean, that is that is really powerful for anyone that's just coming in and uh, just settling in. And definitely a lot of people came from this thing. So lastly, looks as if we have a medical couple here. <laughs> uh, we have a medical couple. So how do you cope? No. Doctor is on duty. It, Mom is also on duty. <laughs> oh, well, thankfully, thankfully, my uh, my husband is a GP, so he does night to five. Oh. And I do we do nine to fives as well, so we all come back in the evening. Come back, oh, that's wonderful. The kids, the kids go to school now. My kids are grown. My youngest grown is twelve. Up. Yeah. So they go to school and come back. So it's um, it's easier now. Yeah. I think the terms of um childcare was a bit <clears throat> was a bit much. Excuse me, but it's easier now. It's easier. I would say that, oh, and awesome. it's easy. For every mother and father out there, it gets easier. The kids yeah. will grow, <laughs> and childcare will be easier. Will it so, easier? <laughs> yeah, it will be easier. It gets easier. Wow, man! I must really thank you, Lola, for your time this this day. I mean, I have gained a lot from this interview. I mean, <clears throat> um, knowing someone. I mean, I know you very well. We're in the same fellowship, and from philosophy ah <laughs> philosophy to now become a nurse now a nurse yeah. educator that is great yeah. that is great i mean this is this is going to encourage a lot of people uh to know that yeah. yes you can actually be all you are you are meant to be and as you were sharing about um you may start with a particular path and move to another one yeah. In effect, I was, I mean, me doing mechanical engineering. Love the course. But the funny thing is that, do you know I did not serve with mechanical engineering for one day? Yeah. <laughs> I just pivoted. Immediately we finished, graduated. I finished with a 2 1. Just pivoted into IT. And that is how IT up till today. So, yes. I mean, take the opportunity when it comes. It doesn't mean, but it has prepared you for the next level. Yeah. I must okay. thank you sincerely today for uh, for your time. I know I've changed you. I know I've disturbed you very much out of your very, 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 very busy schedule. <laughs> I know you're very, 
<laughs> You're very busy. Getting you to come at this time, I'm so happy. So from us, what's the final word that you have for us on the Mentors Lounge as we round up today? I think I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Larry. I know it's been it's been really hard coming on the platform. So thank you for your <laughs> thank you for your patience. And um, I don't take the opportunity very lightly at all. I appreciate the platform. I appreciate um, the opportunity to be able to share my story. And mm-hmm. hopefully, my my hope and wish is that um, at least someone will be encouraged. Someone yeah. will be inspired. Yeah. And trust me, it was not easy. There were tears. Mm. It was not. Mm. But um, I think I got to a point where I looked at my girls and I I told myself giving up was not an option. Mm. Uh, I want my girls to know that whatever point you are at, if you mm. want to make a change, it is possible. Mm. So go wherever the um, wherever you have to. Mm. If it, it's something you need to do, do it if you're finding joy in it then carry on mm. if you no longer find joy in it you're not stuck yeah so find find a way so thank you for the platform thank you for the evening it's been a nice uh, discussion as well and i appreciate that thank and you to so everyone much. listening and to everyone listening thank you for listening thank you for hearing yes, hearing yes. me black <laughs> <laughs> thanks thank so you. much lola so that's it on the mentors lounge the last episode for October with Omolola Amoto Show. Thank you very much. So, Thank till you. I come away again, it's Larry Lewis signing off on the Mentors Lounge. <laughs>